Welcome to efinanceacademy.com. My name is Shiv Farooq, and in today's video, I'll be talking about the study plan and the study approach for CFA Level 1 uh, program. So uh, before uh, I, I talk about the study plan, uh, a common question that I get asked, and that's what I observe um, with the candidates that are interested in CFA program, is that why is CFA exam so difficult? And I always respond to this by saying that CFA exam is not difficult, but it's actually challenging. If you look at especially level one, most of your level one has just simply has foundational knowledge. So the content itself is not that difficult, but there are certain reasons why the exam is actually challenging. So let's first try and understand uh, why do I consider the exam to be actually challenging, but not difficult. So if you look at your level one or each of your level of CFA program, there is immense and vast amount of curriculum and material in each level. I look at it in this way. For example, if you see the CFA Institute curriculum, that is the textbooks, you will find that in level one alone, all the curriculum is spread over 3000 plus pages of text. So you have got around hundreds of learning outcome statements that each candidate is expected to master. So the content per level, the content in each level is really huge and gigantic. So even if it's not difficult to understand or conceptualize, but what makes it difficult or what makes it challenging is that it's huge amount of stuff or huge size of stuff that you would be learning uh, over the next couple of months. Now add to this fact that the exam, your level one or each of the level exam is, ha happens in a one single day. So all this curriculum, all this gigantic curriculum is tested in a single day exam that is six hours long. So that's like six hours long. It's like a full day exam. And this exam is divided into two sessions. You have a morning session and you have an afternoon session. Each of the session is three hours long. So it's a very stressful day and a very stressful exam because such a vast amount of curriculum is just assessed in a single day exam. Not only that, how is the exam? The exam is all multiple choice questions. So you have in level one, 240 multiple choice questions. Well, this may be a good news for some because you might be thinking you will have like three options only and it will be easy to pick the right option. But given the size of the curriculum, to be able to answer the multiple choice questions or, a, or to be able to pick a right precise answer from the options that are actually given to you would really be difficult because this simply means you will have to literally master the curriculum really well. Keep in mind, the exam is not asset type where you can write anything or anything that you actually wish, but you will have to choose the right precise answer, which means you need to retain and master all the learning outcome statements very well. So your plan or your strategy that you would actually build should incorporate all this that we have actually talked about, the fact that the curriculum is just too vast. <clears throat> Now, I often see um, young lads um, that they tend to think that they can study for CFA like the way they might have studied for their um, academic qualifications. And most of the times you will see that these young candidates uh, might have studied just in the last week or the last day or just a couple of days before the exam for their academic exams. And yet they actually aced the exams or did really well um, in the exams. But honestly speaking, if, if you follow the same strategy for the CFA exams, whereby you think that you will be able to uh, just cram everything up in the very last few weeks and still pass the exam, that's just going to be a very disastrous strategy. You need to make sure that uh, you do not treat CFA exams in the same way as you might if you have ever done um, the same, if you have ever done the same strategy for your um, academic exams. And we'll now talk about the study strategy or the study plan. Um, 
A very common question before we talk about the study plan is when should I start? And my response to this always is you should start immediately. You should start now. Whether you have three months until the exam, whether you have six months until the exam, or whether you have nine months until the exam, make sure you start immediately without wasting any single time. So the day, the moment, you decide that you want to go ahead for the CFA exams, just make sure you start immediately. Even if you have nine months or 12 months, don't think that you have too long of a time. Even if you can't commit a lot, make sure to start studying immediately, even if that means uh, just spending a few hours on a weekly basis uh, preparing for the exam. Now, ideally, you should be allowing at least six months to prepare well for your level one exam. And that's an ideal time that you should actually be um, following. So while six months is the ideal time, uh, if you can dedicate more time to it, the more likelihood, the more chance that you will actually prepare well for the exam if you can actually commit more time uh, than six months um, as well. So, uh, so what should you, you be doing during these six months? Um, here is how we could actually look at the plan. Uh, let's say that if the exam is going to happen, let's suppose if the next exam sitting is early December, then you should make sure that you should start studying right from the beginning of June. So let's say right from 1st of June, you actually start studying for the CFA um, exam. And this is going to be your study phase. So let's suppose in your study phase, which is going to be your longest phase. So uh, from 1st of June, right towards mid of October or towards late October, you are actually going to be studying. So let's say you're going to study um, until 21st of October. You can, you can modify the dates a bit, but I'm just going to give you a rough plan that could actually help you. And you can, of course, customize um, this plan. So this phase is going to be your study phase. And we'll talk about what should you be doing in the study phase later on in a lot more detail. How should you be studying? What resources should you be actually using? Where should you practice from? And all these questions will be addressed later on. Uh, once you have finished this study phase, and this is going to be the longest phase that you will actually see, the next phase that would start will be around uh, three to four weeks of time where you would actually revise and revisit all the topics that you studied in the study phase again and repractice everything. And that's, that stage would, let's say, be from 21st of October all the way until, say, 20th of November. So in this stage, what you're actually going to do is you're going to revise and repractice everything. So this is your revision stage. All right, after the revision stage, so you need to at least allow around three to four weeks for your revision stage. And after the revision stage, you might want to now, you will have to now do some mock exams. And I recommend at least practicing six full fledged mock exams for each level. Of course, the more you do, the better it would be. If you can dedicate more time to it, that would be better. But make sure you do at least six mock exams. So starting from 21st of November, all the way, let's say until uh, 30th of November, you will actually do mock exams. And then finally, the last couple of days, four days or three days um, or five days, whatever you have time left until the exam, um, you are just going to revise and review all your lecture notes you will go back to all the topics quickly skim through everything you'll go back to your mistakes uh, or whatever you have actually learned from the practice questions whatever mistakes you made in the mock exams and in the questions you will just simply revisit all that stuff until the exam so let's say if the exam is on 5th of december you're just going to do a consolidated review You might want to add or leave one of the mock exam close to the actual exam, maybe two days before the actual exam. Uh, you might want to uh, sit 
um, a full fledged exam before the actual exam. So you can simulate how the actual exam would actually be. So you can keep one mock exam very close to the actual exam date as well. That would, that would also be um, a good strategy. I also recommend that once you finish your study phase, it would be, it would be good or it would be okay to take one mock exam right away just to test yourself so that you can also get a push uh, for your revision stage as well. Not only that, you will also observe commonly or, it's, uh, or, or commonly we come across candidates who tend to think that by the time they finish their study phase, they've already forgotten the st stuff that they covered early, the topics that they covered early in the June and July, they've already forgotten. So that's totally fine. You will see that a few stuff would actually become faded. You don't have to worry about that. Once you get into the revision stage, hopefully everything will come back once you start revising all your um, notes as well as start practicing um, again. So the plan that I've actually made is a very generic one. You might want to customize this a bit based on your experience, based on your qualifications and so on. You might want to know in the study phase, how many hours would I actually or would the candidate have to spend in order to study properly and prepare well for the exam. So how long should you spend to actually uh, study? And the CFA Institute actually recommends, the CFA Institute recommends 300 plus hours of study time. They say on average, each candidate spends around 300 plus hours of time in preparing for each of the level of CFA program. But personally, based on my experience, I would strongly recommend that you should plan for, I recommend that you should plan for 400 plus hour of study time for each of your level, level. especially for level one, make sure you dedicate 400 plus hours of actually uh, time. You can expect that based on your background, this might vary, but on average, this is the amount of time you would actually be dedicating. So that would amount to roughly around on a weekly basis. You can expect that it might take you around 15 to 20 hours of quality study time every week. So make sure you prepare yourself for that. And that's why I say, uh, even if you have nine months until the exam, that's not early. Just get started immediately. You might need just a few weeks to get into the rhythm for, of study or to get into the proper mood of actually studying. So get started immediately and you can customize this plan uh, according to uh, your profile. All right, so while I've given you this plan, which is an ideal plan that you should actually um, follow or, um, and of course uh, you can customize this, uh, you might not want to buy what I have actually suggested. Uh, and for that reason, I have just simply copied pasted what the CFA Institute recommends um, in their book. So this is an official statement coming from the CFA uh, textbooks. I'll just read it out for you. And as you can see, the CFA Institute makes a very similar or, or exactly the same recommendation as what I am actually suggesting or the plan that I'm actually proposing to uh, you. So I'll just read this out for you and you can see it for yourself. So um, the CFA Institute recommends that successful candidates report on average of more than 300 hours preparing for each exam. Your preparation time will vary depending on your prior education, experience, and you will probably spend more time on some study sessions than others. As the level one curriculum includes 19 study sessions, a good plan is to devote 15 to 20 hours per week for approximately 19 weeks to studying the material and use the final four to six weeks before the examination to review what you have learned and practice with practice questions and mock exams. This recommendation, however, may underestimate the hours needed for approximate examination preparation depending on your individual circumstances, relevant experience, and academic background, you will undoubtedly adjust your study time to conform to your own strengths and weaknesses and to your educational and professional background. So this is coming straight from the CFA uh, Institute and this is the recommendation. As you can see, our plan has actually been tried and tested. That's what I have been suggesting to students for over several years 
and the CFA Institute also actually recommends um, a similar uh, strategy and a similar timeline. All right, so the next question that pops up is, in the study phase, what should be the order of the topics that a candidate, that a level one candidate should actually follow? So with the six month ideal plan, what I've done here, as you can see, is um, I have made a very generic uh, plan uh, that is spread over 19 weeks. So starting from, let's say, first week of June, this would run all the way until late um, October for the December exam. And uh, this is a plan that I propose and recommend. And of course, depending upon your strengths and weaknesses, you might want to modify and customize this plan for uh, yourself. So um, as you can see, the first subject that I recommend that you should start with is ethics which is ethics and professional standards. Um, although the weight of this subject is 15% um, of the exam, but I'm only dedicating um, around only one week to this because um, ethics is a topic that I always recommend that you should study um, at the start. And also uh, towards the end of your study phase, you should come back to ethics again and study it again. Um, another thing is ethics doesn't take long to study. It's all theoretical topic. So it wouldn't take you that much long to be able to study ethics, but, but this should not mean at all that you should not uh, focus and stress much on this topic. You need to come back to it again. There are a lot of jargons and a lot of terms that might actually be used in the examples uh, that you will actually go through. And it would be much easier once you come back to ethics after covering the rest of the topic. So towards the end of all these topics, make sure you go back to ethics again and spend a fair amount of time uh, on it, reviewing the content of ethics um, again. After you're done with ethics, I recommend that you start quantitative methods, which is in short quants, uh, but I don't recommend that you do the entire subject in one go. Uh, the reason being is, so if you look at the material in quants, you have approximately around um, six readings. The first reading is based on the principles of finance, which is time value of money, while the rest of all the five readings that you have in quantitative methods are statistics. And oftentimes, most of the candidates um, are find statistics a little, uh, a little challenging, or probability concepts or probabilities are a bit challenging for uh, quite a lot of us. So uh, in order to make sure that you don't get stuck right at the start of your study, um, I would recommend that what you should do is make sure you cover the first two readings. The first reading is time value of money, which is very important and very essential for all the following subjects that are actually coming. And the second reading is statistical concepts where you will also learn some basic stuff that would be required in other topics um, as well. So make sure you cover the first two readings and you can leave the rest of the four readings. Um, I also recommend not doing them at the start, especially if you don't have statistics background is because the questions in the textbook, uh, in the CFA curriculum, uh, some of them are actually difficult and they might put a break on your progress. So I don't want that to happen right at the start of your study. So just do two readings and you're all set to move on to um, your another topic. So the next topic that I actually recommend is not economics. So the third topic you would see would actually be economics in, in the CFA um, curriculum. So if you have a background and if you have studied economics before and you feel you're good, then you can study the economics uh, as a third topic. But if not, then you can leave it to a later stage and you can get started with financial reporting and analysis. That's your accounting uh, subject. That's the highest weighing, just like ethics. It has 15% weight and around, um, you've got around 11 readings, um, around 11 to 12 readings altogether. That's why we are dedicating three weeks to it. Need to make sure that you conceptually build good understanding in this subject as it comes, uh, as you'll have an advanced level uh, in your level two. Next topic would be then corporate finance, a relatively easy topic, very much related to the uh, concepts in uh, FRA, financial reporting and analysis. Um, the weight is good. You don't have too many readings. They're not too long readings as well. You have approximately around six readings with just 10% weight. So two weeks should be fairly a good amount of time to actually try and cover all those um, readings. Next comes equity. 
So um, equity, equity investments, that's your equity subject. And that's around 11% weight. So quite a good weight for about six readings. And again, relatively, relatively candidates find this subject um, on a, with an average level of difficulty. So it's, it's, an, it's a subject that you should spend a good amount of time on and make sure you do a good amount of practice as well. The next subject that comes is fixed income. Although this is a topic that a lot of candidates actually find challenging. Uh, the reason being because most of us don't get exposure to fixed income securities as much as we do to the stocks, to, to the equity um, securities. Um, and that's why because of the lack of exposure, a lot of information you learn here would actually be new if you have not ever traded or invested in the um, um, fixed income markets. However, the subject is very interesting. And if you get to know the basics in this subject well, uh, you will notice that the subject is actually not difficult. But because of its difficulty and because of the fact that it takes a bit long time, uh, I recommend spending a little more time on it, maybe two weeks or two weeks more than two weeks. So I'm recommending around maximum of three weeks, although the exam weight is the same as the equity subject. That's around 11% as well. So I repeat, making sh I repeat again, make sure you understand the basic, um, under basic concepts in fixed income well. And if you do that, Honestly, it's not that difficult subject. All right, so I've written the next two topics together, which is derivatives um, and alternative investments. These are two separate subjects or topics. Derivatives in terms of the exam has 6% weight, while alternative investment also has 6% weight. Um, I don't recommend more than a week, but if you want, you can adjust the time here between fixed income. Maybe you can spend two and a half weeks on fixed income and one and a half week on these two topics. The good news is derivatives, um, although again, since because of the lack of exposure, uh, a lot of information here could be new, uh, but derivatives has only got two readings, only two, and alternative investment has got only one reading. So you can imagine only three readings make up your 12% of the exam. So it should not take you too long. And it, this, this is an area you need to make sure that you dedicate a good amount of time on, because in terms of weight per reading, it's the highest, in both of these uh, topics. So make sure uh, you spend a fair amount of time uh, on both of these topics. Next uh, would be uh, now, if you see the textbook after alternative investment, you get portfolio management. Uh, but I recommend studying portfolio management towards the end um, because you have got around six readings with six percent weight. So in terms of weight per reading, it's like really low compared with other topics like derivatives, alternative investments, fixed income, equity. So equity is six readings with 11% weight. Same goes with fixed income as well, around six readings um, with 11% weight. Corporate finance, the same. So if you want, you could keep it to the end or you could cover it right after the alternative investment that I'm leaving to you. But this is what my recommendation is. As for quants, you can come back to quantitative methods, part two, which are the remaining four readings. So two readings above and four readings all in all make six readings and that amounts to 10% of your exam. So you can cover the rest of the four readings and then you can move on to economics, which is 10% of your exam with about seven readings. And finally, uh, the last topic should, would be portfolio management, which would actually be 6% of your exam. All right, now that we have a topic wise plan, um, what should be the study strategy during the study phase that you should actually um, follow? And here is what I recommend. So if you're making use of um, our resources, um, here is actually my recommendation that, uh, that I would actually advise. So uh, first thing, you watch my videos or you attend uh, my online uh, live classes. So you, if you're watching videos, make sure you watch a video reading wise. So for example, you can watch a video on time value of money reading. Uh, you should keep making notes from the video, whatever notes are actually being made as I explain the concepts. I would also be uh, giving you uh, the PDF files of the uh, lecture handouts, whatever notes I'm actually making. So once you have watched the entire video, you should review, after watching the video, you should review the lecture handout. So you should just go through all the lecture handouts again, try to redo the examples yourself to make sure that you have actually uh, understood the concept fully. 
And after reviewing the lecture handouts, you should directly jump to the uh, questions. And I recommend going through the CFA textbook, the CFA official curriculum textbook, the CFA textbook. I recommend that you go through the examples and the practice problems that are given to you uh, towards the end of every reading. So if you are doing time value of money reading, make sure you go to the practice problems after reviewing the lecture handouts of the time value of money um, reading. All right, so um, my recommendation, as I said, is the CFA curriculum. I don't recommend practicing from other sources. Your primary source of practice should be the official CFA textbook questions. Those are the best questions you could actually get. They come directly from the CFA Institute. They come directly from the CFA Institute. And we know that the CFA Institute actually makes the CFA exam. So no one else can actually replicate the style and structure of the actual CFA exam questions than the CFA Institute itself. So make sure that you practice the questions from your CFA uh, Institute reading uh, wise. And you need to practice as much as possible. And I can't stress much on this. You need to practice, practice, and practice. And as we know, practice makes man perfect. But I, I sometimes see that candidates often, without studying the topic, just try to actually understand and learn the topic by practicing. And that's a totally flop strategy. Uh, that's more like a blind man shooting in the air. So you need to make sure that before you actually practice, you understand the concepts well by, by studying each of the topic um, as I have actually recommended before you jump to the questions. Secondly, uh, I also come across some students who tend to just study a topic, like for example, watching a video and reviewing the lecture handouts and leaving practice questions uh, towards the very end, maybe for the last month of revision. Again, that's a very bad and is disastrous strategy. You need to make sure that you practice reading wise. You haven't understood a topic fully until and unless you have practiced it. So after understanding a topic, make sure you jump to the questions. You will make, you will, you will make errors. You will make mistakes while practicing questions. And that's how you will learn and actually improve. And you need to repeat all these steps the three steps that I'm actually recommending here, reading wise. So after you're done with your first reading, let's say time value of money, you then need to move on to the second reading and third and so on. So this should be the order that you should actually be following. All right, so why should you trust eFinance Academy in your CFA uh, journey? First, our faculty has um, experience of teaching CFA program over 60 plus times. So specifically teaching CFA program um, over 60 plus times. So uh, hence we have developed great expertise in teaching CFA. Um, in all our video recorded lectures and online classes, we ensure that we comprehensively cover all learning outcome uh, statements. So you can be rest assured that nothing will be left out and everything will be covered uh, quite comprehensively. We also have a very unique teaching style and you can experience that through the free sample videos that we have on our uh, web page. Um, and we tend to focus on conceptual understanding of the topics rather than root learning or just simply reading the slides. So once you understand the concept uh, through our teaching style, it would be a lot more easier for you to actually remember and master uh, that particular learning outcome statements instead of just learning the um, uh, formulas. So you can either join us through our pre-class video recorded lectures, uh, which we have on our website, or you can also join us online. So we have an online live class coming up. And if you would like to get further details about our upcoming online class, feel free to drop your details on the website and one of our team member will get in touch with you uh, with the details of that particular class. Thank you very much for your time. And um, I wish you all the best and stay safe and stay blessed. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments and I would be happy to respond to your